Hey guys, welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. Today, uh, we're gonna be putting on a new brake system. We're gonna be talking all things electric drum brakes on RVs. And so we're gonna be talking about manual adjusting your, your brakes, plus these new auto adjust brakes. And we'll point out some of the differences and we'll do an install. If you have non auto adjust brakes or otherwise manual adjust brakes, um, the process to make sure that they're tightened up correctly and to do their adjustment, basically what you want to do is make it so that the wheel cannot spin freely like this. You want it to be pretty firm. And to do that, there's a little plug on the back plate here that you can pull out. Don't lose that. You're going to need to pop it back in place. And basically, that's how you're going to access your star adjuster. And on the right hand side, what I'm finding is that I can put the spoon in at the bottom and lift up. And that's going to adjust the brakes tighter. And the opposite way is going to loosen it. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So it's gotten really difficult to turn. So we're going to go ahead and back this off now, going the opposite direction on the star screw mm -hmm. so that it is e just barely easier to turn. All right, so there's a little bit of drag, which is good. It's just a matter of feel. I think we can stop turning it now. Okay. So that's the process of adjusting your brakes. And remember, once you're done, this cap needs to go back in place and you're done. So to replace the brakes, you know, these, these can come in full sets like this. It includes everything you need, including the backing plate. So you reinstall the whole thing onto the RV, comes with the magnet system. So let's take a, open this up a little bit and we'll put it down. Well, I guess our cameraman's working out pretty good. So the new braking system that I chose is the auto adjust. These are lippered, but you can get them from Dexter and other manufacturers as well. And basically what these are gonna do is make sure that as you brake, it's gonna turn this little star wheel uh, so when it pulls, well, <laughs> that's how it would work. Um, however, the drum is not in the way, so I have to adjust that back. But every time you brake, this magnet's going to move and it's going to adjust this so that your brakes always stay at the proper adjustment. They're a little bit different. We'll point out the actual differences. We'll do a side by side uh, for these versus the manual brakes. Um, so we're going to install these. They come with all of the hardware that you need, including the nuts that hold these onto the axle, as well as the little electrical connectors, because we will have to splice these wires in to the existing wiring system. And then because we're taking off the bearings or taking off the hubs, I did get a whole new set of bearing seals. And so this fancy little table is going to be the tool that we use to press whoa, these back into place. So it's going to give me something nice and solid to push these in without damaging these seals. Since we're going to have everything apart, uh, it seems the proper time to lubricate our bearings. This is a bearing packer that I did a video. We'll link that up in the corner. And so if you want to see how to pack your bearings, uh, this is a Lyle. We'll, we'll just link it up above. So check that video out when you're done here. All right, so we've gotten the first brake off of the right-hand side of our RV. So we're going to take a look at the old one first. And this one is a non-automatic adjusting. And so all of what you see here is has to be manually adjusted. Now, if we look over at the new brake, it has this extra cable. And that 
actually, and I'm going to rotate this, that has a, and I don't know how we're going to actually see this, it was that silver thing that popped out from behind here that will allow this brake to automatically adjust, and we'll do it again just for kicks and giggles. This little thing normally holds on to this little star wheel, and what that does is it keeps the brake up against the, the drum as it's supposed to be. Now since, we'll go back over to the old one, since this doesn't have that, the star wheel down here, I'm touching the spring, the star wheel down here needs to be adjusted manually. Now, I didn't know that I did not have the automatic adjusting brakes, so I've never adjusted these, but as you can see, this brake pad, shoe, whatever you want to call it, is, I think technically it's a shoe. I, I, I use them interchangeably. The front one is actually still in pretty decent shape uh, from a depth perspective, but this rear one has gotten really, really narrow. Now, your brakes need to be replaced when this pad reaches 1 16th of an inch, 0 0.0625 is the number that this needs to be at to require replacement. And if we pick the narrowest part here, we're thinner than the gauge measures, which is 0 0.0787. So I want to replace these one other thing that's good to know is that these magnets can be replaced separately. The magnets alone are available for maybe about 15 to 20 bucks. I don't know the exact price because I always focus on buying the whole unit, but these can be uh, replaced on their own and should be if these holes are no longer available. These are kind of like your gauge pads. There's four holes on here. So if they are not, uh, if these holes are not, able to show then you need to replace those so we're going to show you the process of taking the old brake off and putting the new one on so then you'll do what you can to take out the original hotter pin and get it as straight as possible So this, 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 mm -hmm. you don't need the leverage. Yeah, that's why I'm having you do this one. The fingers are just going to get more and more greasy. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a washer that needs to come off. With the leverage? No, it just pulls. Oh, I just got to pull it? And pull the other washer. Okay, the next thing is the bearing. How do I pull that off? So normally what I do to loosen that bearing. Oh. Then you put that on the plate. So we'll go ahead and we'll get as much of the grease off of here as we can. With this one towel. And go ahead and twist around it and stuff. And make sure that you get in this groove at the bottom of the spindle. So like... Once you have the spindle all cleaned, there are five bolts in the back of the plate that need to come off. There are nine sixteenths uh, socket. Okay, then the last bit, uh, they're all off. Okay. The last bit is the wires back here need to be snipped off. And there's plenty of extra buried in that uh, axle. So 
cut them as close as you can to the existing connectors, but on the axle side. And then you can go ahead and remove the entire brake assembly. Well, you lifted the other ones. Really? I did? Yeah. When you're putting these on, taking them off, the spindle should not be marred by this work. And so you can tighten these, these five nuts on to finger tight, and then we'll use a torque wrench to tighten them the rest of the way. Each one of these five bolts is going to be tightened to 30 foot-pounds uh, and we're using a... Gotta be lined up, right? Uh, we're using a... nine sixteenths. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a half-inch drive. This is not... All right, and then the last part of putting the new brake setup on is to take these two, uh, I don't know, wire connectors and hook them into your new wires. Now, these brakes are, for some reason, they decided to strip the wires, but you don't need to have them stripped, so I'm going to cut off the ends. And these are not uh, polarized in any way, so just as long as they're connected. They don't have to be connected one way or the other. Just make sure you're connecting the power to each one of the sides. And these things are filled with like a dielectric grease, so I think they're a pretty good answer to these connections. And you just want to make sure that they're all the way through. Then you can take a pair of pliers. And that's all there is to replacing those. We're going to clean up the rest of the um, hubs and everything, and our job will be complete. There are just a couple of other things that I wanted to let you know about. When you're putting your hubs back on, make sure that you get that hub seated on properly. And to do that, you can use a torque wrench and tighten down to about 50 foot pounds while you're spinning the hub on the spindle and that'll get everything seated up then you'll back the nut off and then finger tighten it till you can get that cotter pin through the other thing that needs to happen once you replace your brakes is a process called burnishing and effectively it's heating up the brakes to about 350 to 400 degrees so that everything gets seated up to get the proper glazing and all kinds of technical terms like that I am going to put a link to a video that Lippert provided that explains the process and I will also try to put it up in the corner here if YouTube will let me do that. Thanks for watching this video guys. I really appreciate your support and I'm hoping that you'll click that subscribe button and maybe even comment down below to let you let us know, let me know what you think about how I you know, approach this project and any other comments that you might have about your experience doing breaks. So we'll see you next time, everybody. My name's Todd. This is the Alcohol Free RV, where we do mods, repairs, and upgrades along the way.